here about when the... Hi. Wait a few seconds to get started. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's your favorite day. My favorite day. Q&A Wednesday. I like Q&A Wednesday, but it's a little bit more my thing than, than yours. So, hi. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Don't be shy. Say hey and where you're from and what you're working on. And today, like I said, it's Q&A Wednesday. So if you have any questions at any time about woodworking or business or creativity, anything like that, um, shoot them our way. Our topic today kind of is social media, I think particularly Instagram um, focused, but we'd be happy to answer any questions on any topic. So um, that being said, I'll go ahead and start my kind of regular announcements. We are here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Instagram Live. We also record these and share these to YouTube afterwards. And then Instagram has also started a really nifty feature where you can share your lives as a post to your feed. So after this, we will share this to Joseph's JWT Woodworks feed, and, and you can go back and watch it there too. So that's really awesome. That was a neat little feature that kind of surprised me the other day. So um, you can also watch Mary May on Twitch at 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. She does some free wood carving lessons. And then I have a weekly live stream on Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. with Women of Woodworking. And so I will have that tonight as well. And speaking of, I just shared the first profile that I've written in a while. She was from South Carolina. That's where we are. We're outside of Charleston. But uh, Jess Budnick, she's up near, um, she's in Clover, South Carolina, so near the border of North Carolina and South Carolina, and she makes jewelry mostly out of burl wood and gets her materials from her husband makes um, custom rifle stocks. So she gets the scraps from him and makes some really, really neat, funky modern jewelry that I like. So it was nice to, I don't think I've profiled anybody from South Carolina no, yet, so. believe it or not. Yeah. So it was nice to, to have a hometown, home state feature yeah. this time. With a familiar story, kind of. I mean, or uh, uh, was, at least a combination of, like, you know. Or and maybe that's why I, like, wanted to share it so bad. It was, like, almost identical with how I started my jewelry business. So um, started working with you in, like, 2010, mm -hmm. kind of designing and... Um, assisting I guess you could call it on things and doing all of the marketing and kind of admin side of stuff but I really loved woodworking and wanted to do some smaller stuff and um, just saw all these beautiful shavings on the ground and was like god there's got to be something we can do with this there's got to be something we can make and so I started making jewelry actually out of the shavings off the hand plane um, and have since, you know, changed my technique, but may have made a bunch of jewelry using off the scraps. So to hear Jess's story where her husband was making these uh, rifle stocks and I want to see them. I, I still haven't seen them. Like, uh, I'm sure if he's using Burl, they're probably pretty gorgeous rifle stocks. Yeah. I and mean, gun stock is usually, I mean, that's where it comes from like the walnut stumps and, um, where all the just crazy yeah. grain is going on. Yeah. So, um. I'll, I'll try to find his information too, because I just I want to see that and, and see it because it's like the stuff she uses really pops. So yeah. I think he does like a lot of long range rifles. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's just some really really pretty work out there. But um, definitely appreciate the 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 reverence of the woods. Like just so it's so pretty. You don't want to waste a a square inch of it. So that's perfect use for it. Yeah. Because I always used to keep my off cuts thinking like oh it'd be a nice drawer pull or um you know so i have boxes of drawer pulls um tubs and tubs, tubs tubs of drawer, drawer pull material um yeah. that you know you, once you put it in the box you know you forget about it so it's nice for to go to something that's yeah gonna be seen and used yes so and there's a story behind it there's always like a matching piece of furniture or something out there and mm -hmm. And people like that. And it makes you feel good about what you make and, and buying that, too. So, yeah. So, yeah. But um, also, I am teaching um, two classes next month at the Florida School of Woodwork, a virtual workshop, actually. And that was kind of why we decided to talk about social media today is um, both of those workshops will be specifically social media workshops for makers or creatives. 
Um, so if you are an artist or even just a hobbyist and are thinking about starting to share your work, um, these workshops be a great fit for you. Um, the first one is on Instagram and the second one will be on Facebook, but basically we just kind of go through everything and figure out how you can, um, utilize these free tools you know you can have free social media accounts and actually generate business off of that and um just help demystify a little bit of the process behind marketing and social media um and and we were saying like before we started like what our topic was going to be today and um i said you know social media would be a good one especially because you were like one of my hardest clients to get going and um Basically, like if anybody, you know, if, if Joseph can, he has never had a Facebook account, never, you know, no Twitter, none of that. Um, don't own a computer. Don't own a computer. Can't even, you know, I have a Mac and he's like, what? <laughs> you know? What is? It's like me trying to pick up one of your tools. Yeah. But, um, so after a few years and, uh, and being on Instagram for a short amount of time, I found that it was one of the better platforms for creatives and artists and, and people that wanted to socialize and be on social media and share, but didn't want the complexity of Facebook, didn't want like all of that stuff being barraged at you all the time, all the drama that comes along with it. Um, Instagram was just, it's a simpler platform. There's still so much you can do within that, but it helps keep your story concise it helps you reach targeted audiences i feel like a lot better while facebook is the biggest and most utilized social media platform um it, there are a lot of of cons to that so um just talking about social media a little bit after a few years and and seeing what worked and didn't work i told you that i thought you personally would like to use instagram and at first i remember you're kind of like eh, but then like once you gave it a shot, it just kind of, you know, 37,000 followers later. Um, what has like surprised you about it? Like being someone that didn't want to do social media for a while and then getting onto it. What was something that surprised you about, about that? Um, pleasantly or unpleasantly? Well, I, most of it has been pleasant cause I, well, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, like I said, not, no, not using Facebook and um, not really being involved with anything like that, you know, technology wise. Yeah, Blackberry. And, uh, Love the Blackberry. I did have a Blackberry. Um, RIP. Yeah, I like to eat Blackberries. It's <laughs> yeah, about my. But anyway, um, I, I, I can just remember you know, you suggesting it and me being just like, oh, okay, like, why not? Let's, I'll take a picture of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I was good with that. And, you know, I, I think, I remember I, you know, opening it up the first time and like posting the picture and then be like, oh, there's other people doing what I'm doing. And wow, they're sharing what they're doing and how they do it. And that's really cool. And then there's just the fluff that, that, you know, I guess that's to be expected with anything. So, um, not, not necessarily surprising about that, but I was surprised on, I guess, I guess just it's being naive, but you know, you know, I knew there were certainly other people doing this. Um, but just, um, the, the number of people and <clears throat> everybody's, you know, different methods and how willing people were to share and uh, show their work. And that really drew me in um, and then made me want to share more about process and um, the work I was doing. Um, you know, and fortunately, what I was doing was interesting enough to enough people that it caught on. Um, and... I think if it would if that wouldn't have been the case, I don't know how much I would have been involved with it. Um, I liked. I mean, obviously, I was doing the work anyway, so taking a picture of it and then talking about it really wasn't a big stretch. Um, 
and like I said, for, fortunately, people were interested in it. Um, you know, so that was, that really, you know, it was, it was kind of easy it, for me. It was just, you know, I just posted what I was doing, talked about it. People talked back and, you know, that it kind of, I was lucky enough to where it was just, it didn't, it was easy. So it, there wasn't a whole lot of effort involved just doing what I was doing and then documenting it basically. So, um, I guess surprised that there were that many people interested in it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was used to, you know, I had the people that I went to school with. I had, you know, so there was a little bit of contact with, with one or two of them, um, but not much else than that. And then I had, I didn't really have anybody around me doing the same kind of stuff. So I really didn't have, you know, all of a sudden there were these people. Or we didn't know they were out there. Well, that's the thing. I didn't have any idea. So all of a sudden having this, you know, this platform to have these like-minded people discussing um, the things that I was interested in and working on and could bounce ideas off of or just, you know, just were interested in what I was doing was really cool. And, um, you know, then there were some people that I guess thought I had some value in what I was talking about. So that was not necessarily expected either. I was just kind of used to being in the shop, doing what I was doing. If a client was interested and liked what I did, then they bought something. Um, and maybe if I went to a show and someone came in that wasn't necessarily a client, but was, in, you know, was a woodworker, I could talk to them there. And then it was like, you know, sitting there an hour in a show, um, talking to somebody. But yeah. other than that, I really didn't have that, you know, besides me and you talking about what I was doing, there really wasn't, um, a whole lot of talking involved with what was, what I was doing and what was going on. And, and, and you're definitely, talking to me and I'm like, what? what? Um, yeah so I mean that was really cool being able to to feel like you know there were some just some walls to bounce stuff off of yeah and that was really neat and um, definitely nice to have some um, positive feedback and um, you know some appreciation for what you're doing especially um, you know clients which you know is the is the goal to um have them appreciate what you're doing and buy your work um but just personally having you know other woodworkers appreciate what i'm doing and how i'm doing it that was pretty i mean that was kind of validating i'd say um at least to let like oh man you know i, I think i know what i'm doing and i think I, I like you know the process i'm doing but then to have other people, you know, maybe doing similar things, and it kind of you know, made me think. Well, okay, I'm must be doing something right. So, yeah. Well, and I think it really opened up people to see your personality behind your work. Like, there's no doubt your work is, you know, very eye catching and and stunning, and your process is is very detailed and unique. And I know a lot of woodworkers, especially you know drew attention to that but you you were right you made such a good point that for the longest time it felt like we were the only ones doing this out here and I mean mm. we're in a swamp in the middle of the low country of South Carolina so you know you do feel very isolated and getting on Instagram and seeing all these other people from around the world you know <clears throat> doing what you do and that's the other thing is not everybody's doing exactly the same thing of, uh, as you do so it's just amazing that you get to see other techniques and learn things from other people and mm -hmm. see different styles. And, um, it was kind of like, I mean, we went through a period there where we were like, whoa, you know, we were on Instagram a lot, just personally, I think seeing what's out there and yeah. learning and kind of studying and seeing, you know, who, who else is out there following a similar passion. And we've made such good friends. Um, I mean, again, Roy Shack in Australia, you know, people all over the country and, um, it's neat when we did travel a lot and go to shows, we always had a friend wherever we went. Like there was always somebody there for us to meet and like grab a drink with or supper. And we've made some really great lifelong friends off of that. And that's just our personal gain as like people, artists, yeah. like getting creative stimulation, not even talking about business opportunities and things like that, that have come out of it. Um, you know, lots of opportunities that we probably wouldn't have, 
been able to do otherwise or companies that wanted to work with us that um, may not have seen us otherwise. I mean, Instagram has brought, you know, a lot of really good things. Um, and also, again, just like connecting and building that community, I think it's fostered a lot of real, really good networking opportunities in person for people to like ever since I've, you know, been following the Instagram connection, you know, there's a lot more wood guilds popping up. There's a lot more events that we're just more connected. So instead of it being, you know, a local market, now it's regional, now it's, mm -hmm. you know, national. Um, and it's, it's just been a, a very, very valuable tool. Um, another point that you talked about was that you made, you did your thing and made it work for you. Right. And that's a huge thing that I think a lot of makers and creatives struggle with. You know, you go on Instagram and you see these influencers and they have tons of followers. They have sponsorships and are doing all this, but, you know, things start to kind of look the same. You're not really sure what they're saying. What are they promoting? You know, everything kind of gets a little muddied and and not to say that being an influencer is a bad thing by any means if you want to be strictly a content creator the thing is that is enough work for you to just do that all the time but if you're a, a woodworker or a maker and you already have something going on full-time and you just want to share that thinking about social media that way makes it so much less daunting you mm -hmm. know instead of thinking oh i have to take these super nice pictures and I have to get all, you know, get all this and like spend all this money and these, you know, all this extra stuff to kind of like fluff things up and like, yes, good pictures and videos and content make a difference, but the story is within you. So if you're trying to set yourself apart, you know, just sharing what you're already doing and really letting some of your personality out, I think that's the best way that authenticity People really resonate with that, especially in a world like today where everything is like commercialized and just, you know, um, yeah. especially in a field like woodworking. People get into woodworking because they like the one of a kind aspect of it. So treating your your social media like the one of a kind person you are um, rather than trying to be like everybody else. Um, that that seems to work for for a lot of folks. But, yeah. Um, I mean Good work speaks for itself. So, I mean, there you, go. you do good work, you do interesting work, people want to know about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, there's lots of stuff that can get you followers and, and all that stuff. And somebody, I was watching somebody earlier today and they're like, you know, there's this groundhog that's got 200,000 followers. So, I mean, like, oh, oh. Fred or whatever his I, name is. I don't know. I mean, is he the one eating the guy's garden? Yeah, the carrot guy. The, eating the carrots. So, I mean, See? like... See? I, you, so, know, you know, I know so, what he's talking about. Right. So, I mean, it's... <laughs> he's really cute. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I can't remember, <laughs> remember what his name is. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's but lots yeah, of... yeah, I mean... You, there's lots of ways to do the flash and, and stuff like that, but... Um, yeah. Good work. Good work speaks for itself. And, and also, who you who do you want to attract? Do you want to attract customers or people that are following you that aren't really fully invested in what you're doing, aren't really fully invested in listening to what you're saying? You know, if you put out, it's kind of like the law of attraction. If you put out what you want to receive, you know, good content, informative content, you know, that sense of community, asking questions, talking and engaging, then you're going to get that back. Um, I know sometimes a lot of people just feel like they're like throwing spaghetti on the wall and like seeing what sticks and you do have to do some of that, but especially in the workshop, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to use the tools that social media gives you to try to like maximize your impact on that and, and to see what are people really captivated with that you're doing? What are they really wanting to see more of or hear more about? Um, so yeah. And I mean, I've mentioned it before, but, um, you know, it's hard because at first when social media came out, like sometimes people would contact you for things and you're like, is this real? Yeah. Are you a prince in Nigeria? You know, like it was kind of, but you know, fall it's sometimes it's important that follow up. I mean, that can, you know, let you know whether it's a spam or, or a scam, spam, same thing. 
um, or if it's actually like a legitimate opportunity. And we also have the benefit of having the rest of the internet out there so we can validate some of these folks, you know, like um, the art gallery I work with in California, they contacted me over Instagram. And of course, I'm first, I'm like, all right, let me check up and, and see what's going on. And like, sure enough. And so, you know, now it's, I mean, opportunities like that, um, you never know. You know, if you put yourself out there, you never know what will come back. That's right. So, so yeah. I feel like we've been talking like we always do during Q&A. And like, so if there's any questions or anything, like, please interrupt us and send them in we that's that's why we like to kind of pick a topic um and hopefully give y'all something to think about and maybe you'll come up with questions later um so yeah but um yes i tonight we've got the women of woodworking live stream that's also on instagram um mary may is using twitch and it seems like she's having pretty good pretty good luck with that mm -hmm. um Mary May is kind of the video maven of the woodworking world. I'll, I'll say that, like wood carving. Um, and I have not used Twitch, the platform, for um, myself. I don't have a lot of experience with it. But since she is on there, I've started engaging it more. And it seems like she's having good success with it, too. Specifically for live streams. Uh, Twitch, I think, was created for, for like gamers and people who live stream while they play. But they're kind of expanding it into like arts and craft and things like that. So Mary, they, of course she's, Mary was telling me about Twitch. <laughs> so I mean, and she's the one, you know, she'll, she'll be like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. I'm like, Mary, you like, you're killing it. You're just killing it. So, um, she is also teaching a class with the Florida school of woodworking. I think right now, um, through May 1st doing, um, just kind of like open carving, virtual open carving. So, Check out um, at School of Woodwork or Mary May, um, at Mary May Wood Carving on Instagram. And there's other ways that you can connect with the community right there on Instagram and learn. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess you want to talk a little bit about what you're kind of got coming up next. We, we saw the, the seat on the chair on the rocking stool. It's, it's attached. Oh, yeah. So, working on finishing that. Got a seat attached. Got some little detail work I'm trying to iron out. And then... Um, Literally? Yeah, we well, got lots of dents. Sorry. It's beating. <laughs> Didn't stop Dropping myself. It. Dropping clamps on it. Dropping the Maybe. chair on yeah. the floor. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. I got, got a little bit left to do with that. I'm pretty pleased the way it's turning out. Um, yeah, so little little details to iron out, and then you know doing the the finish and and um, should be should be wrapped up pretty soon. You know, after that, um, got a wardrobe, I guess. Um, Pecky cypress. Um, it's a log I milled myself um, before I had the sawmill. It was a used a chainsaw mill to mill it up. Some really pretty old growth pecky cypress which is gonna um present its own challenges being if you don't know what pecky um it's basically i can grab a piece it looks like swiss cheese yeah it's got a lot of holes in it yeah, you can um, grab a piece. um yeah so it's gonna be nice He said, I'm going to grab this tree, and it's like a tree. There we go. Can we get this get this in here? So, this is a rough piece, but um, a lot of voids in it. Color, when plain, is just, it's, uh, I don't have a piece milled. Actually, that little piece right there is. Um, Where is that? Right here. little piece. So, some pretty sweet color. Yes. This doesn't have any 
pecky in it. Um, this is the same log, but um, the pecky. Yeah. Yeah. Pecky. The effect from the mud. Yeah. Being so it's it's been um, submerged um, for who knows fifty plus at least years. At least. Um, yeah. So this is the end, this is more the inside of the tree. It's it's a fungus that. Um, starts living in the wood while it's alive and um, it tends to happen so the, the inside is what has these little channels um, and the fungus eventually yeah. kills the tree right um is that kind of what ends it or uh, you know I would imagine it has a lot alive? yes he's definitely alive Ooh, no, thank you. um yeah <laughs> the, the, it has to have some effect because it's it's um you know, it's basically, um, these channels are, I've, I've cleaned a lot of them out, but they were just packed with, basically, I don't know if you can, yeah, it's just, the, it's, like it's shred, deteriorated, shred. yeah, shreds of wood, um, yeah, that's a large spider, um, <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, there's going to be some, definitely some challenges on, on using it, I'm really trying not to use any epoxy with it and and fill any of those holes um so it's the challenge i guess for me is going to be um you know, how to make this not be such a rustic piece um oh. so a lot of times this was used you know, back in like the 70s it was used as paneling um and so I've never really seen a lot of fine furniture made with it, um, so why not? It's um, we like a challenge. It's it's gorgeous material and old growth, super tight grain. Um, I mean, this yeah. This is this tree's. Is there anyone? Is that? Oh, this probably can't see the end grain. Probably not. Um, a little bit there, but yeah, just packed. I mean, real tight. Yeah, some towards the outside, it's almost nearly indistinguishable. I mean, wow. 30, 40 rings an inch. Um, it's trees. What did we say, 800? It's somewhere around 800 years old, probably, when it was cut. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's going to be. Yeah, uh, it was under yeah. For and all yeah. That. Um, checking out what buddy is. Yeah, dude, that guy. He's got some, I think he's got some edge or I, something. I think we need to, like, charge rent. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so it, it's going to be challenging for sure to make, see how I can make this more of a modern piece. It's, um, basically for a house that doesn't have a lot of closets, so it's going to be, the, the storage for clothes is going to be a closet, an exterior closet, basically, which yeah, is kind of wardrobe. So, yeah, but definitely more, um, more modern, um, I mean, not crazy modern, but, um, you know, simple, clean design, but definitely not rustic. Um, so you think in a lot of like really clean lines, yeah, and... just real clean lines. It's gonna, um, it's gonna have two big frame and panel doors on the front. Um, originally I designed it to where the sides, Top and bottom were dovetailed together, but I don't think I'm going to be able to dovetail through that. No? Pecky. No. Uh, I mean, there's just not enough material in the middle. So, yeah. probably going to be frame and panel on the sides as well. And um, frame and panel on the sides. Oh, he's moving. Mm -mm. Yeah, you're, you're large. Y'all see that? Can y'all see that guy? Whew. Probably not. He's brown and uh, I don't know what kind of spider that is. But it's kind of not... grayish brown. That's why I'm not too crazy about. Yeah. So yeah, frame panel on top and uh, sides. Look at that guy. Frame and panel doors. It's going to be sweet. Some shelves inside, <laughs> several set of doors. Our drawers, I mean, a little bank of drawers inside. Yeah. Um, Excited about it. It's definitely going to be challenging. Um, so we'll see. He's just going to be 
it be great or it'll be crap. We'll see. Hopefully it'll be It's great. definitely not going to be crap. No, it'll be pretty. Definitely not going to be crap. Um, Gotta have, I mean, you know this. I'm not going to put I, out crap. I know this. What, what are you? Oh, not man. on my watch. It's large. Yeah, so. dude. I don't know. We might, we might have to go. Yeah, he's going to have to. Daughter interrupted the last live and <laughs> big old spider. Yeah, for those of you who joined us Monday, I'm really sorry. <laughs> we, that was our, our first time really getting badly, badly she's, interrupted. She's come downstairs before, but not was, like that. She was not. She was upset. She was not having it. She was upset. So that's yeah. why there's no Monday Live on Instagram or YouTube. It was just cut so short and we felt so discombobulated. Uh, so hopefully today will go a little bit. It went a little bit better. Yeah. But. As as if I anybody can. knows um, anything about spiders and recognize that, let us know. Appreciate it. Yeah, we've got quite quite a collection out here. Some really large ones. When we first built this place, uh, that first like summer or two, holy cow! Like, oh my gosh, the spiders that would pop up in here. Like, I can't, I can't believe that. So, well, any other questions before we sign off? I'll give that a few seconds to kind of go through. Um, so we will be back here on Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern here on Instagram Live. Let me like tilt you up a little bit. So yeah, we'll be back Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern here. Mary May is still at 1 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, Monday through Friday. And then join me this evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern over on Women of Woodworking. I'm going to be talking with Jess Budnick of Blonde and Burl Wood Company. I think that's the name of, of her, ta her tag. And... Um, so we'll be chatting with her and then also just hanging out, talking about woodworking. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, we'll let y'all go until Friday. Yeah. See you Friday. Thanks for tuning in.